Coming to you live from the Space Coast Daily Studio in Cocoa, Florida. It's Space Coast Daily Sports Talk with Juan. Boom, perfect timing. And Zach. That's what she said. <laughs> Where we discuss the latest news in sports on the Space Coast in Central Florida. Here are the hosts of the show, Juan and Zach. Ready? Ready. And welcome into the Space Coast Daily Studios here at Erdman Automotive here on US 1 and 520. Well, welcome into the debut of the Space Coast Daily Sports Podcast. With me today, I have Juan Rodriguez joined with me here in the studio where we're going to talk about some great topics across the board regarding sports here in the 321 Florida and a little bit of a national landscape of what's going on in the realm of sports. In particular, today we're going to be talking about football and we're going to start off in the local ranks. But first, before we get started, I want to welcome in Juan Rodriguez into the show. Juan, how you doing? Man, I'm doing great, Zach, and I'm just glad, you know, we've been talking about this for a while, you know, it's... Been, we've been building up the hype, and I'm just glad we're, we're finally here, able to do this. Absolutely. We got a lot of great stuff that we're going to be doing this year regarding Space Coast Daily and the Space Coast Daily Sp- Sports Podcast, where you're going to be able to watch this podcast on all the streaming flat- platforms regarding the podcast app. We got Spotify. We also got SpaceCoastDaily.com, Facebook, YouTube, um, all across the board. You're going to be able to watch a broadcast like this. You should also be active here on social media as well. So if you got a question or a comment or um, you want to make your voice heard, uh, that now's the time where you can be able to do a voice, uh, be a part of the show. Very exciting. First, Juan, uh, one of the things we're going to talk about here today is high school football. We're doing a football preview show here today we on this podcast, and high school football is only less than a month away. Pretty crazy to think about that we're already in the, uh, we're in the thick of it right now. Yeah. And it's been a long summer. I think everybody can agree. That when you get into that spring and then the early summer, it just feels like it's just dragging. You're just waiting for that football season to come around in August every year. You're waiting for the media days. We've already had UCF had their Big 12 media day already, which now part of the Big 12. Yeah, yeah, crazy to think about, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big deal, especially when you're, uh, you know, you live in Florida for so long and you see where UCF has come from. I mean, being just kind of known as like another Florida school to you know being respected on on a full scale national level now which it's really cool to see and on the local level here with the 321 we got a lot of great athletes here in this county like we do every year but this year we also got a special little great talent um, throughout the county I'll have you talk about a little bit about that here in just a sec But we got some great talent that is going to be going all sectors of the country uh, looking to make their college decisions. And uh, we're going to be right there uh, covering it uh, as it happens. And anything that you do with high school athletes, decisions and recruiting and the days of the NIL era, Mm -hmm. it's ever changing. And it's going to be very exciting for, for us to be able to follow that close hand. One of those guys that you've uh, got a chance to interview a couple times, Juwan Taylor, yep. um, Coco grad, yep. and him and uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson. They, yep. they, they I, I mean, it's just all across the board. This yep. talent in this county is just unlike any other. But let's talk about high school sports now. Let's okay, so three, two, one. We are about a month away here to the high school football season, and it's going to be very exciting. We got a lot of great coverage and a lot of great things are going to be coming forward, but. Let's talk about this upcoming season, uh, Juan. I want us to ta- start out by first giving a good overview of uh, what you expect from this uh, high school football season here in uh, the 3 2 1. Yeah, you know, I guess a lot of the known and the unknown is the best way to describe it. You know, we know who's going to likely be the top two programs as they've been in year in and year out that's that's coco rockledge right and until we see otherwise those are the top two teams for the most part and you know for the unknown it's more like some of these programs that have had a lot of coaching changes and you know with transfers whether coming in or or losing players and of course you get those graduating seniors that are going to move on every year right but you know this whole transfer scene i mean we've seen in college and it's just trickling down to the high school level and we've seen that the past few years and it's just going to be interesting to see and a lot of coaches have moved on to different jobs you you talk about Bayside um, you know MCC with Coach Hooks I mean 
all over. I mean, Palm Bay, Palm Bay coach Burke coming back, Space Coast Sports Hall of Famer. Yeah. He's head coaching once again. The Friday night locker room, Steve Wilson and Orville Susan are going to be very watching the the teams of Rockledge and Titusville very closely this year. They'll be kind of like their beat, mm -hmm. if you will. And then we're going to cover other parts of the county too. And our, our other great uh, staff members and colleagues, uh, Ron Lighthall and uh, Daryl Durand. Yeah. And we, we got a great host of talent across the board where we're going to be able to cover all parts of the county uh, this year like we do every year. And uh, it's going to be very exciting. But uh, as we get into it, I, I want you to unveil your, your top eight, your preseason top eight. Now, I know this is going to be pretty controversial. Some pe always some is. teams are always going to be feeling a little left out, but that's okay. It's okay. It's good motivation, good bulletin board material. Yeah, yeah it's good and to, it, to throw in our face maybe down, down the absolutely, line. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And I know they like doing that from time to time. Right. Juan, yeah. uh, I'll have you start out with your top eight, and then I'll come up with my top eight. I want to preface this by saying this is not the official preseason Space Coast Daily Top 8. We're going to come with one later. However, this is myself and Juan's Top 8. So just so we're, we're clear. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that way we don't, we're not speaking clear. for the, the whole team at Space Coast Daily because there's some pretty passionate discussions that we have over the years. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we've been a part in this uh, community for, for quite some time. And so we, we know these teams, we know these coaches, we know how much passion there is, and uh, we feel pretty uh, pretty well qualified to be able to know across the board what talent is in what parts of the county, but sometimes there's some surprises. But Juan, yep. I'll let you start off. Who's your top eight? Yeah, so... Let's start from the bottom and work our way up. Start so. from the bottom yeah, and yeah, work yeah, our yeah, way up. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, So, you know, as, as you mentioned, this is kind of like a preseason. This a little bit has to do with what happened last year, what's going into this year and kind of where they're at right now. Okay. And also, you know, you got to sprinkle in a little bit of the unknown. And with number eight, you know, I'm going to go with Melbourne because Melbourne. they're dealing with a lot of seniors that have left. And, you know, th their coaching staff is very good. So this may be one of the, the worst takes on this list and putting them at eight. You know, they're still a good program. They're still a historic program here in Brevard. They're just dealing with a lot of uncertainty at this point. It's hard for me to put them in a in a top five right now because of the teams that are also on this list as well. So for right now, heading into the preseason, we're going to put Melbourne at eight. At seven, we're going to put Merritt Island. Merritt Island, they're, you know, they're still transitioning from the post Hurley Brown era. Uh, Coach Tyler Murray did a, a wonderful job, you know, bouncing back after that with a six and five record. So now they're going into their second season under Coach Murray. I expect them to probably be in around that same area, probably improve you know they're over there developing some good talent they had a good team and last year they lost a lot of players exactly. from that state championship run team that they that they had a couple years ago i mean that's that was a huge undertaking by, yeah. by murray right exactly and as you mentioned they have a lot of players that are i'm sure going to be returning from that team and you know just the development and the coaching staff there you know i have good faith they'll they'll be higher than seven at the end of the season and then at six, uh, we're going to put Titusville. Titusville finished seven and four last wow. year, you know, made the playoffs their first season under coach John Holmes. Now they're going into their second year. I'm sure, you know, they've brought in some more transfers. They've, they've kept a lot of that good talent there. And I took a look at their schedule and it looks like, you know, other than a few teams, I'd say they'd have, a, they have a pretty good chance of, you know, repeating and, and making their way into the playoffs again. And then at five, we're going to go with Palm Bay. Palm Bay finished eight and four, won their first playoff game since 2017 last year. Bit of a coaching change, but you know this isn't no first year head coach that's taking over. We got Dan Burke, who is a legend here in Brevard County. Space Coast Sports Hall of Famer. Absolutely, you know two state championships, 15 district championships, and he's been with this team for the last two seasons as defense coordinator. So it's not like he doesn't know the players. Right? And I'm a firm believer of you know on the high school level that coaching plays a very big part on on a team's success. Of course, it's you know player driven, but once you have the right leader to lead these young men, I, I believe that makes a huge you know almost all the difference when it comes to these programs. So. So we had Melbourne at eight, Merritt Island seven, Tesville six, Palm Bay five, and now this is where it's going to get a little interesting and probably controversial. I'm probably already controversial <laughs> right now as we stand, but that's okay. Um, so we're going to go with number four, and that's Heritage. Five and five wow. last year. Okay. Probably a little underwhelming, but I really like what they're doing there with their coaching staff. First year head coach Michael Benson. He's been around. He's no stranger to football. He's been able to 
to bring in some really good guys to to build that staff and the players are going to play for, i believe they're really going to play hard for coach benson over there i mean you can see some of the content they're already putting out i mean he's got them all you know bought into the vision mm-hmm. they got a tr- some big transfers from their their rival in bayside and adam kasai um along with the wide receiver uh cordero mm-hmm. uh, you add them along with players like joseph tenta and judah knight who have already been there establishing a culture there i think i think heritage is really going to make some noise next year and uh that's going to be interesting to see okay and then three we're going to go with O'Galley, one of the more consistent programs in Rivard county uh led by coach sands who's done a phenomenal job you know pumping out talent you know whether it's division one you name it does a great job there They're very consistent made the playoffs last year i expect them to not really have you know too much of a a setback from last year i think they're mm-hmm. actually going to improve and have a really special season as well and then number two rockledge nine and three last year we know we know all about rockledge you know consistent every year on their coach yeah. coach younger and producing some of the top talent in the whole country you, you start with jalen hayward who's borderline a five-star you know commit to georgia you got Traven green coming back after a great year last year dj mccormick one of the leaders on defense who just committed to ucf recently and but they're gonna have an interesting slate when it comes to their schedule only three home games their second game of the season is all the way in texas so that's gonna be you know we're gonna have to watch that closely see how that affects them see if they capitalize on that you know seeing what the talent's like everywhere else but for right now they're at number two and then number one the defending state champions coco tigers um they have a tough schedule to start too though first three games jones venice st thomas but they got the talent to back it up per usual and javian hilson uh they got the transfer from mel high brady hart at qb six six four six five pro style qb which you know coach snyder he when he gets the QB he likes, he tends to do pretty good in a, in a former QB himself. But they lost players as well. So for right now, it's hard to not put the defending state champs in at number one until, you know, proven otherwise. So there it is. Pretty surprising. <laughs> uh, a few surprises in there. I, I like that list. That's a really good list. Um, really high on heritage. I, I, that's one of the things I, I noticed. That's a team that has kind of gone – under the radar and just it, like people kind of forget about heritage, I right. think a little bit um, down there in Palm Bay, but you know, that's a team, like you mentioned, you know, they're, they're getting some talent down there and that's a, a program that is really um, has had a lot of success in the past, maybe not as recently as they would like. Um, but that's a team that's made the playoffs multiple times and has gone pretty deep in the playoffs uh, a few years ago. Right, so yeah, we'll go. Let's hear it. We got to hear yours now. All right. Well, yeah, <laughs> Be ready for this one. Okay, so a uh, little bit of a different on the on the bottom, um, but uh, number eight, I got satellite. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in the Scorps in there, but uh, you know they're gonna have a little bit of a, a different flavor this year. I'll, I'll see what what's gonna happen with satellite. Number seven, kind of a little bit of surprise, I know, mate, but, but uh, and you know the bulldog community is gonna be a little bit uh, probably uh, offended, but I'm gonna put them at seven. Um, a more generous. I put them at eight, so either way, they're not going to be too happy. Okay, well, yeah, <laughs> they got some work to do to get up to the top five. You know, that's it's, the thing. It's, it's like it's not a it's not a downplay to anyone. It's more just it's harder to put them when there's some unknowns. Well, well, there's so many unknowns, and you consider the season that they had last year. They had a great season last year. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean, you you go from that, you're going to have a little bit of a downfall or a little bit of a rebuild to, to get started back up again, and. Yeah. Uh, and now I know this is going to be a little controversial because of the success that Melbourne had last year and compared to this next team that I'm about to mention at six, I know it'll be a little bit. But Merritt Island, I got at six. Um, probably will be some people, um, you know, kind of going back and forth on that one, how, how that makes sense. However, I think with Merritt Island, I think they're building a, a great youth program and they're building from the, from the middle school down to the high school. I really like how they have some of those young up-and-comers that are going to be coming up. They're going to be a very good team. Um, and then in a couple of years, and I think they'll also surprise some people this year. I don't think they're going to be an easy out uh, for a lot of people. That, that's a pretty good team. And, um, you know, last year they lost a lot. Uh, a lot yeah. I mean, all their seniors left. Um, a lot of those players that were there last year are going to be back this year. So you got a little good contingency there. Heritage at five. I agree. I, I, I think Heritage is a top five team. Um, 
but um, I think there's still a little bit left to be proven yeah. with uh, with a team and heritage. Number four, Palm Bay. That's kind of my surprise team that I have for this year. They're kind of my sleeper. I really like the job that uh, Jake Owens did last year with that team, and I think Dan Burke is going to be able to take that team, give it a little bit more discipline, a little bit more flair, and I like how that team's going to look this year. I covered quite a few Palm Bay games last year, and it was a team that was on the cusp of doing something pretty great early on in that season, and I really think that you know they got some matchups where – they might be able to match up pretty well against uh, a lot yeah. of their competition that I really like. I agree. Old Galley, number three. I think that's one of my one of my favorite teams uh, to kind of watch uh, over the last couple of years, seeing that young team grow up. They've got a lot more um, maturity now. They're getting they're getting into the, the prime stages of their of their careers. And Crooms, I mentioned, he started as a freshman. Now he's a junior, and he's starting to look like a really yeah. good quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks probably in the county. Yeah. Um, so very excited to see that. And number two and number one, well, we're going to kind of differ on this one. I know that Coco is the state champs. However, I do think that classifications, divisions matter, mm. and your level of competition, I I think Rockledge is going to be the top team. They're going to be number one, Coco number two. Wow. Um, and I really in fully anticipate that Rockledge is uh, going to beat Coco this year. Um, I know that's going to be a little Man. bit of a surprise for some people. However, there is a lot of talent on Rockledge this year, and I think this is a team that is going to be um, challenged outside the out out of the gate. However, Coco is also going to be challenged out of the gate. But you look at those schedules. I mean, both of those teams are going to be facing a gauntlet early on in the season. Yeah. I mean, so I would not be surprised if we had our two top teams, um, you know, drop a first first couple games. Yeah. I mean, you look at Coco last year; they lost to Jones. Yeah. They're going to be playing Jones again this year, and the same thing could happen. You got Venice. What Venice. is it? An eight A school? Yeah. I, in- I mean, uh, that's that's a very hard level of competition that you're going to be going up against, and, and then you got St. Thomas Aquinas. I mean, it speaks for itself. Um, and then you got Rockledge. I mean, Rockledge is going to be going up across the board. Um, I think they only have three or four home games for the whole entire year. Three home games. One in three home Texas. games. I mean, I mean, one away game in Texas to add on to their huge road trips that they're going to be enduring all season long. I mean, they got a kickoff classic. I believe that's at home, and they're in their first. In their, but that's a kickoff classic. That's an exhibition. Right. However, like you're going to be going to Texas. You're going to be going to the West. Uh, coast of florida you're going to be going i mean they're going to be all over and so you're really going to be able to tell a lot by this team these teams early on um can they keep it together i just think you know when you look at a team like rockledge um that's a team that has been on the cusp of trying to get deep in the playoffs but i feel like every year they just don't live up to the hype and once they get to the playoffs they get they get pretty close but they just can't get over that hump in the next next tier of the playoffs. That's going to be the biggest question, yeah. and and that's going to probably be what some people are going to say. You know, why why would you put Rockledge on top of Coco when Coco was the state champs last year? I consider classifications and divisions a very important about who your level of competition is because since these new classifications and these divisions came down with the FHSAA, yeah, um, you know, you put a Rockledge in a Coco uh, division and vice versa, I think you would have about the same result. Uh, yeah. Rockledge is in a much harder time for classification, in yeah. my opinion. That'll be very exciting. And, and again, I know it's a little controversial. And again, this isn't the Space Coast Daily official top eight. So you've already heard some disagreement here between me and Juan, but, you know, respectful of disagreement. Um, I think Rockledge is the best team this year. I think Rockledge is going to beat Coco um, towards the latter part of the season. Ask me in about seven or eight weeks. <laughs> that may change. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> we'll see how the teams play out and how the schedules, uh, you know, fizzle out. That's but. the high school football kind of a little bit of a breakdown. Uh, and we'll have a little bit more breakdown as we go. We're actually going to go and get some of these coaches and these players, too, where we're going to interview them, talk about their teams and what to expect and kind of get to know them a little bit. And I think that'll be good to kind of get to know these teams and these players uh, that are going to make it happen. Yeah. And who knows, maybe that'll change predictions as well. Maybe I've just uh, a little... A little speed. Yeah, you know, Come to the studio. We, you move up on the list, yeah, right? We, yeah, we gotta. <laughs> once, once this is, you know. Uh, out in the in the internet, everyone gets a, a view of this. Hopefully, by the time they come in here, we'll have some more uh, about the the, fr- and- the first team and the first coach that come in here with players and coaches. You, you move two spots up on the list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. See, <laughs> so if you want to get in here, you know, and, and move up in the ranks, just just come on it. There you go. There you go. I, I like it. Very nice. 